Now that we installed the Stripe SDK, we created a product. Now we're ready to start the Stripe checkout process. And there's a few steps to this. And for the first couple times when you do this, it could be pretty confusing, but it's not bad after you do it a couple times. So the first thing we need to do to start the checkout process is we need to create a session ID. And to do that, we need to send in the price ID. And the way we'll do that is from our client or the Angular application. We'll send in a price ID to one of our own APIs. And then our API is going to talk with Stripe, sending in the price ID with some other information, and then send back a session ID to our Angular application. So that's the part we're going to be working on in this video. We'll be working in the back end, the API creating a checkout session API. So what we're trying to do from within our application is when the user selects the order now button, we'll send in the price ID. And the price ID is the product we created in the last video inside the Stripe dashboard. So we'll send in that price ID and then we'll wait for a session ID to be sent back from one of our APIs. Now our API is gonna talk with Stripe and create a session ID and send that back to the front end. So that's what we're trying to accomplish. And they are actually have really good documentation on how to do this. And I'll have this link in the tabs. If you're at oopcoders.com, you'll find it in the tab link off to the right. And then if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll find it down at the bottom in the description, this link. And this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to send the customer to the Stripe checkout page. And we need a session ID before we do that. So let's check out the documentation they have here. And then what you're looking for is create subscription. So select this right here. And here they show you how to create a subscription. And a lot of the steps we already did, like we set up the Stripe, we installed the SDK in our .NET application. We tested it, made sure it's working. And now what we wanna do is we want to do step four. We wanna create a checkout session. In this video, I'm gonna copy and paste this snippet they have here, and we'll go through it line by line. But if you would like the finished version of this, you could always find it within the snippets link. If you go to the home page, if we go back here, and if you click on this snippets link, you could just copy and paste the finished version I have here. And again, you'll find that in the Oop Coders tab. If you go off to the right and click on help link, you'll find it within that tab or down in the description link. So let's go back here. We'll copy this right here. Inside of the API, we'll open up the payments controller. And then in here, we'll do some refactoring. What we'll do first is we'll remove this products API. I just set this up in the last video just so we could test out our, our SDK, but we're not gonna be using it throughout the course anymore. So I'm just gonna remove it. And then this whole section here, I'm gonna replace with a snippet that I'm getting from Stripe. So I'll just paste, paste it in here. And then we'll go through it line by line. The first thing we want to do is we want to set up our Stripe configuration API key again. So in the last video, we set it up from within the API, but there's actually better ways of doing that. And in this video, I'll set it up from within the constructor. In later videos, we're going to be setting this up in the startup class. But for now, I'll just set it up within the constructor. So I'll just remove this and then create a constructor and remove the parameters and just cut this out and add it here. And that's one way of setting up your API key. And then I'm gonna save it so it cleans it up for me. And now we're ready to start setting up our API. So we're gonna be passing in the price ID here. We'll set that up pretty soon. And let's take care of some of these errors like the session create options. We'll bring that in from Stripe checkout. Make sure you select the checkout. I made the mistake of selecting the bill billing portal before, and you get some errors. So make sure you select the checkout in this case. In later videos, we will be using the billing portal though. So let's go and select the Stripe checkout, and that should take care of some of our errors. And then this whole section here, I'll remove. And now we wanna set up some of our options. The first thing we wanna do is set up the success URL. So if the customer is successful at purchasing their product, where do you wanna send them to? So here I'm gonna manually put it in or put it in as a string. In later videos, we're, we're gonna refactor this and get this information from our app settings file instead of having it here. But for now, just to keep it simple, I'm just gonna add it in here as a string. So I'll paste in a snippet. And our success 
address is going to be localhost 4200 success. And then our failure is going to be localhost 4200 failure. And again, we're going to be refactoring this in a later video because if you're going live with this, you don't want to come in here and manually change these strings around. You want to get all that information from the app setting file instead of doing it this way. But just to keep it simple and just to get this running for now, we'll do it this way in this video. And then going down, we want to add in card and then also subscription. This is very important because this is going to be a subscription that the customer is purchasing. And then inside the session line, item options you can pass in the price id the reason we're getting this error is because we don't have it within this object yet we'll create that in a second and the quantity in this case it'll be just one once you set that up then we want to create our session service and in this case we don't need to pass in this so we set up our session service and then we create the session notice that this is inside of a try block so if there's any errors We'll, we'll get back a message from a Stripe exception and we'll give back a real clean message letting us know what went wrong with creating the session. So let's add these properties, this price ID or this price to our object. So if we go up here and I already have this object created, the create checkout session request, if I hit F12, we'll create a property in here for our price. So I'll add that here. And then also this will be required. So we need to have this for this API. And bring that in from. And that should take care of our error for that. So if we go back here, we shouldn't be getting an error here anymore. And then let's set up our session ID within the, the create checkout session response. And I already have that object created. If you click on that and hit F12 or go inside the models, you'll find it in there and we'll create a property for that. And I called it session ID. So that should take care of that error. Save this, jump back into our API. And now that error is gone. So this is the session ID that we wanna get back. And then we can redirect the user to a checkout page once we get the session ID inside the client. And before we do that though, we'll go and take care of this error now. And we'll add this error message to our error message. So I'll open this up. And I called it message, save this, and take care of that. And then go ahead, jump into the error response object already created. And we'll add in our property here as well. That should take care of all of our errors if we jump back here. And we shouldn't have any more errors within this object. So this should create us a checkout session ID. So let's test this out in Postman. Make sure you restart the application. So I'll open the .NET up, shut it down, and rerun it. And let's open up Postman. If you're following along with the GitHub project, you should find this Stripe collection file within the repository. You want to pull that into Postman. And then the API you want to open up is the API payment crate checkout, this one here. And this is the API we'll be testing out. So we want to pass in the price ID into the body. So I'll open this up. And here we want to pass in the price ID. So we want to make sure we get this correct. So let's go into our Stripe dashboard and get that. If we go into here and then go into the products, select the product that we created in the last video. And I made this mistake in the past. Make sure you don't select this ID. Make sure you select the correct price ID. So I'm gonna select the price ID, not the product ID. So copy this price ID right here. And then let's go back to Postman, add that in here. And we should get back a session ID. And we did. So this is what we're gonna pass in when we're, re when we're redirecting the user to the Stripe checkout. So you wanna make sure you're at this point and you're getting back a session ID. So while we're here, let's test out our errors. Whenever there's an error, we throw a Stripe exception and we should get back a nice message. So let's hit send. And we do. So it lets us know that there's no such thing as this price ID. So that's good. So I'll change that back. Make sure this is working again. So add that queue back in there, hit send. So you should be at this point before we move on to video three.
Now that we're able to create a session ID from our API, let's work on the front end within our Angular application, send the price ID from the front end and get back the session ID and redirect them to the checkout page. And we'll work on that in the next video.